Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Deflating and Escaping Atheism, where uh, on a weekly basis we sit down and find some atheists stupid to make fun of. I'm Max Colbe from the Escaping Atheism Project, and with me as usual is Deflating Atheism. Say hi, Deflating. Hello. Now, what we're going to do this week is uh, we're going to try taking apart another YouTube video we found. Just this to is supposed to be the the entire uh, format of our little weekly uh, uh, hangout here. But we yeah, it was. It while. was. And I'm yeah. not, you know, we'll see how that keeps going because sometimes we just have fun talking. Yeah. Um, uh, and the problem is YouTube is is getting rid of a lot of the streaming apps that we're, we're uh, uh, used to. Uh, and we aren't going to be able to do it. So what we're doing is exploring different ways of doing it. And right now what we're going to try is simple screen sharing. Uh, I've got the video downloaded locally, and uh, we're going to play it. It'll be a little jumpy, but our pre-show test showed the sound was good. Uh, before we play this this masterful bit of, of atheist genius that has completely annihilated me as a theist, <laughs> I'm, I'm terrified to show my children and my family lest they return. They, they realize God is bad and evil and stupid and doesn't exist. No, really. How, wh wh where did you get? The, where did you get this? This, I mean, is he Aussie or is he some kind of? No, I'm guessing he's, he's, he's kiwi. Kiwi, kiwi yeah, kiwi, kiwi. Okay, um, and I'm not even going to spoil it, but just I watched it and I'm like, dude. <laughs> All right, whatever. I watched it once, and do you have anything you want to tell people, like why you picked out this trash or? <laughs> oh well, I, I, I mean, it's it's it has. Uh, you have to say he put some effort effort into it, you know, which is more than, than a lot of the atheists do, I mean, so. There is you know, that. It is like entertainment, so it might be a little more fun to uh, to rip it apart. Do we, do, do we know who this guy is? He's some kind of movie maker or something otherwise. Uh, yeah, he, he's just he's just a, an entertainer and who dabbles in spoken word poetry. All right, well, he's going to change the world, and he's going he's gonna to school us now, and he's going to school us good. I'm going to go ahead and play it. Let me Let me put my screen sharing thing on. Make sure I have it right, and uh, here we go. We'll go at least one minute at a time, unless one of us lets out a blood curdling scream and can't handle a whole minute. <laughs> so, so here we go. Um, atheist brilliance. Here we go. Gravity. Put up the sound all the way. He's a little gray. So, if God really cares, but belief is a prerequisite. Then why doesn't he appear to oh, yeah. find out and sequester it with a public miracle or a television appearance live at six? I'd be a faithful adherent. This might offend believers, and I'm sorry about that. But I'm going to carry on heedless. If faith is paramount and science needless, then hell must be full of overachievers. You see, it seems to me that if belief is key, then hell must be one hell of a party. The great minds are there, I've no doubt about it. I'm going to take this time, though, to discuss the devout. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. How many straw men and assumptions... <laughs> well, I, I'm not even going to try and keep, keep, keep count. Yeah. Um, I will say offhand, Dude, you've done a very masterful job of responding to the most simple-minded twelve-year-old uh, Christians. Um, so you've done that. You've, you've done that. Well done. Well, what do you think? They're deflating. Uh, well, first off, he begins. Well, why hasn't God appeared? Well, of course, according to the Christian view, he already has. Yeah. Uh, according to the atheist view of total skepticism, if, if, if the atheist saw God coming in the sky he would find some way to dismiss it as a hallucination or a mass delusion or something. So, so it's, it's, it's a complete uh, red herring there. Well now, okay. So let's point out that he's completely um, rejecting all, you know, individual eyewitness reports of miracles, appearances, yes. Yes. Those must all be eliminated no matter when and how they can just hundred percent of them can be eliminated. And instead he wants apparently a TV appearance, <clears throat> Which leads to the logical question, why would you believe a TV appearance? <laughs> what would be on the TV appearance that would... Then you'd really have some CGI skullduggery or something. I mean, you know. I, you know, I mean, really, the Death Star appearing uh, would not prove God. Uh, a guy uh, with a beard appearing that was like 
pointing at people and making explosions go yeah. off. You wouldn't believe that. At least I doubt you would. <laughs> well, I mean, it goes back to the kind of the human view that no matter what happens, anything, any other explanation is preferable to the supernatural explanation. All right now, Deflating just pulled out his uh, philosophy background and said yeah. Humean. If you don't know, it, he's referring to David Hume, who's got to be one of the best atheists ever, um, just because he denied God, but he also denied reason, knowledge, cause and effect, and science. Just Radical so skepticism, yes. That's radical skepticism. And you, I, I actually have to do admire that. It's like, yeah, let's just go <laughs> ahead and... It's consistent. Yeah, it's all a bunch of crap, including your very existence. That would be David Hume. Um, I don't know Does what to say this way. Oh, no, wait. It says truth. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. okay. Uh, okay, should we keep going? No, 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 because I have something else there. He's, he, he kind of recycled that uh, internet meme is that, like, if there are so many great minds in hell, then they've probably invented air conditioning. I'm sure you've heard stuff like that. It, well, it never occurs to them that in hell – what gives you pride would be the first thing that's stripped from you, you know? Oh, that's a good, uh, that's a good analogy, isn't it? Um, and that's just one way of looking at hell. One of the <laughs> things they'll be allowed to bring their, they'll be allowed to bring their circle jerk right into hell with them. No, it doesn't work that way. Here's the interesting thing too. They will take the most cartoonish versions of ideas like heaven and hell. So they won't yeah. listen to anybody uh, really wow. intelligent. Yeah. They, they think it's clouds and, flying and you're going to get to do your favorite hobby forever and the other hand they don't do that to buddhists and hindus who talk yeah. about things like nirvana and reincarnation and rebirth and all that um they just super simplify the christian ideas and don't investigate any of the deep christian thinkers hell is a state of mind it's a state of existence it's not bernie fire i mean that's at least what most yeah. sensible people believe um and it's a choice to turn away from goodness or towards it i mean that's the simplest way of putting it. There's way more than that. But do you have any other observations for our uh, Kiwi genius here? <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. Let's see if we can get another minute of this. Oh, man. Here we go. They might seem fine, but it can't be denied. They talk to an omnipotent man in their mind. I sit back politely, witnessing the absurd as decisions are being made based on voices unheard. I'm going to clarify now, so you don't misconstrue what I'm saying. Ask any proud believer, this is essentially what they're stating. They want to get to heaven, which is reliant on them behaving, but the laws of their Lord are not open to debating. So when push comes to shove, the law of our land is a plaything. They play by their own rules and we're expected to placate them. There's a voice in their head and they follow its will. And that's fine when it says you to charity, but sometimes it says, kill and if its will is to kill then they are willing and able they literally invented murder just oh, go along. okay okay oh my god look at all the assumption at assertion oh after assertion god. after assertion oh my god Shame, shame on us for inventing murder. Yes, yes. yes, yes. I, I noticed one thing. The and and, and that's fine. The, the, at this point, we got we got to give it back to him. He's definitely othering the Christians of his of of New Zealand and elsewhere. They're they, and the, we're the and he's for you know yes. speaking for everybody else. Although I'll have you know, sir, most people believe in God, even in your own country. Yeah, uh, they may yes. not be Christians, but whatever. And the 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 voice in your head, really, really, you figure that's all it is. I see. All right, so we now we are at a minute 44 in this train wreck. Um, the dehumanizing of Christians, the dehumanizing of anybody religious uh, proceeds apace. Uh, sir, you're, he said they invented murder, right, because there was no murder yes. before. Okay, so you don't believe in the Bible, but you believe somehow we invented murder anyway. And you see the story of Cain and Abel, which, you know, is uh, a real warning about the dangers of, of you know, fratricide and, and jealousy and you know it's the first crime recorded in the Bible yes but it's recorded as a crime you dumb fuck yes 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 uh, I, I, I I and who says it's just me listening to a voice in my head who says that yeah well he's assuming his own conclusion there that's uh, all they ever do I yes but uh, also uh, he starts off by saying that 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 rightly that believers, it may not be Christians necessarily, are beholden to some other law, and he sees that as a challenge, as a danger 
to uh, as opposed to what he calls our law. Yeah, the believers yeah, are law. holding to another law, but they're not upholding to our law. Really, where'd your laws come so, from? To him, to him, the the law of the state is absolute, and he doesn't see any danger in that. Apparently yes. not. Yeah, there's yeah. no check on the state's power. Uh, yeah. Just whatever our law is, uh, the atheist law, apparently, because apparently you represent all of us who are not irrational and not believing in <laughs> Kiwi law. <laughs> I, I, I it, it, he's doing a good job here of uh, of really convincing me. Yes. <laughs> all right. Anything else, or should we keep going? No, where is he? We, we, okay, is he here? <laughs> What's that? I'm not, getting, I'm not seeing the video now. Oh, well, I'm going to start playing again. Let's see if I can get another full minute out of this. Let's see. This ideology is frighteningly unstable. We need to educate people beyond this dangerous stable. I know what's coming next. Well, yeah, but if you had seen what I've seen, you wouldn't be making such a scene. I've experienced miracles, man. God moved through me. Well, that's great. But with just a little read, you'd see your miracles can be explained by basic psychology. You see, I'm stopping him there. Okay, uh, miracles. I still, I still can't see the video, by the way. Oh, I'm real sorry. Uh, oh man, did I screw up and not share it? Yeah, I may not have shared it this time because I restarted. Um, well, there. At least we can see it again. Okay. He's saying the same stuff. Um, all right, so. Uh, our miracles can be explained away by psychology. All right, please present the scientific study that demonstrates that every supernatural experience may be explained away by human psychology. Yes. Go. That, that is a mighty burden of proof he's just uh, strapped to his back right there. He really is, especially because, you know, uh, actual scientific analysis of things like miracles, and there is such a thing, and yes. spiritual appearances and things like that, Great which do here. exist. Um, miracles. Oh, I haven't seen that one. What was it again? Craig Keener. He's he he he's a uh, 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 Craig Keener. He's one woman I don't know. Send me a link. At Duke home. University. Yeah, yeah. Send it to me. You know, the bottom line is is that not everything is reducible to double blind experiments and and or even falsifiable experiments. That's that's one subset only of how to do science, and it's not how a lot of science is done. Most most medical science isn't even done that way. Did you know that? Yeah. I, I mean, I can even tell you that, like, there's no double-blind studies that demonstrate that heart bypass surgery extends your life. There just aren't any. And that's because it's hard to do certain kinds of studies on surgery. All you can do is do medical tracking. And that's just one example. There's all kinds of areas of science that... Never mind. <laughs> he is asserting without proof that it's all psychological effect. Yes. All right. So anything... Okay, I'm going to keep going then. Uh, let's see if this works. When you avoid proof and keep your distance, there's a reason for that. They call it cognitive dissonance. And when you decry facts to justify what you believe in, there's a name for that too. It's called illogical reasoning. These are defense mechanisms to avoid an emotional upheaving. Your mind will do almost anything to keep you believing. But you're not subject to any of that. No. No, because he has seen the light of reason and rationality when he read The God Delusion two months ago, yeah. <laughs> now, now, now he's here to school the world because your atheism is not a belief yes. your disbelief in miracles your disbelief in the spiritual your disbelief in god well at least you're not there stupidly saying it's just lack of belief you do <laughs> believe things things you can't prove things that are entirely faith-based but you believe them okay and you yeah. apparently believe you're better than the rest of us i yeah. gotcha okay all right, I'm gonna keep going. But he used he used the uh, he used the a uh, 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 little atheist buzzword. It's it's the hey, look at me, don't I sound smart now? Atheist buzzword, cognitive dissonance. Oh, and I love the truth cap. So, yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna verify. I, I, there's this other uh, semi atheist but young guy called David. I, I, I'm gonna make him fun of him here and say, arbiter of truth, tell me more. Yes. He's an atheist, but he says that to PL people all the time. Arbiter of truth, tell me more. Okay, arbiter of atheist truth, please tell me more. Uh, okay, I'm going to keep going because I want to hear more what this truth teller has to say to us. Now, while I'm on the topic, I'll address the agnostics sitting on the fence wondering why I'm so caustic. They say, no, stop being such a dick. Doesn't affect us, man. Just let people think what they think. Well, yeah, but it does affect us. Consider the time and lives wasted. If it weren't for religion, we might have had the dark ages. We Stopping there. Oh, <laughs> stupid, it hurts. 
You've got to make fun of the agnostics, of which there yeah. are plenty, um, and, and force them onto the train or make them feel bad if they're not on the atheist train. Yeah. And now we're into the dark ages. Sir, please provide some uh, sources on your belief in these so-called dark ages. Yeah, uh, he got it from an internet meme. That's it. He, re he read it on an internet meme. Yes. Almost certainly because real historians, and I don't mean, you know, like Ray Comfort or whatever, but a historians who aren't even religious will tell you dark ages didn't happen. <laughs> they were, I mean, the, the phrase uh, uh, came about um, to describe a certain era. Originally, it was just described to describe parts of Europe, but basically we don't have a lot of history on because the languages broke down. And yes, people, because the greatest empire in, in the in the world uh, uh, collapsed, yes. And, and everybody wasn't speaking Latin anymore, Latin or Greek anymore, and things were very confusing for a long time. Although, interestingly, buddy, it was the interest institutionalized church and religious groups generally who preserved what knowledge there was. Of, of, of the Greek philosophers, of, Greek of the Greek science. philosophers, of the math, about the science that we did have. And it was eventually the big bad Catholic church, actually, um, that eventually the reason the whole of Europe went to, you know, the reason scientific stuff and, and other things were written in Latin was not to keep the common people from being able to understand it. It was so that the educated intelligence, the literate, the poets, the philosophers, the mathematicians, the theologians could talk to each other. Yes. across languages and the Christians built universities and schools all over Europe to help spread peace and education and science and reason as a result of the empire breaking down and it was to fight off the so-called dark ages and bring education and, and all that back you're welcome by the way as a Christian <laughs> you're, welcome. you're welcome for the science you're welcome for the rationality. You're welcome for the math. You're welcome for the whole idea of things like free speech. You're welcome. Um, should we keep going? Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. You can go company and be flying around in spaceships and stay put earthbound, bickering about gay relations. I'll finish soon. And I won't go on. But I know an author more enlightening than John. His name is Dawkins. He uses logic you can't refute. Okay. No! <laughs> Speak for your own damn self. Oh my god. Logic you can't refute. Speak for your own damn self. Maybe you're not bright enough to to refute Dawkins' facile logic, but some of us are, okay? I've I and, and on the whole gay thing, I I the most despicable one of the most despicable modern atheist things is to grab on to the gay thing yeah. as if that belong you know a hatred of gays somehow belongs to religious people yeah. let me just point out a couple of things to you i've got a video i've been talking about for months i'll get it done eventually um if you look at at, at non-religious regimes regimes run by atheists um while some are very tolerant of gays many are worse than any religious organization any religious yeah. country anywhere um uh worse than the muslims uh, 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 worse, I mean, you know, atheists have a terrible, terrible record when it comes to treating gays. And if you're old enough, you know that the gay rights movement initially, when it started, is just a fact, went out of its way to speak to Christian values and Christians on Christian terms and say, hey, you know, leave us alone, don't persecute us, don't beat us up, don't murder us, don't, don't ruin our businesses. And Christians, for the most part, agreed. And that's what happened. And in fact, even in the United States, in the uh, you know, gay rights uh, up until a very few years ago, still had majority Christian support. It yeah. started losing it lately, and so well, you might want to look at what's been happening that's lately that's made them think, "Wow, maybe we made a mistake to be nice to the gays." Because while they were always anti-Christian, gay, anti-gay Christians, there were always plenty of others that were like, "Don't hate them, don't yeah. kill them, don't." Uh. But that's the gay thing. Yeah. Um, uh, you said that, like in the '80s, it was the Catholic charities who were running all the AIDS hospices. They were, and then yeah. they later got blamed for the whole thing anyway, even though they didn't. I mean, making blaming Christians and not giving them credit is a is a very common atheist trait. But but the atheists, the new atheist movement, they've been trying to get more and more people on board their train, just like this guy's trying to get the agno agnostics on on board. But I, I have to to an extent, they have successfully militarized the kind of gay interest against Christianity, against Catholicism. And that's not going to work for, that's not going to work for long. 
Um, I, I hope they realize that. Um, but yes, militizing them against Christians isn't going to work real well. It's, in the long run, it's really not. Because a lot of Christians who up until even five, four, three years ago were still like, okay, we don't, you know, we're not into the gay thing, but we know you shouldn't be persecuted and treated like garbage. A lot of them are going to change their minds because you keep doing this to them. Um, it was an open, gay rights was an open door for most Christians for the longest time because the whole live and let live mentality, very Christian mentality. Whatever. I also noticed apparently without the Christians, we'd have had uh, spaceships by now. Oh, um, that, that thing. Yeah, we, we'd be exploring the galaxy by now. We, we'd somehow discover faster than light travel. And somehow people's privately held religious beliefs were, was somehow inhibiting that process. Don't ask me how, but they're just, they're just certain of it. That's right. And all of the people like Georges Lemaitre, Father Georges Lemaitre, who gave you the Big Bang Theory, all the scientists who are Christians, well, that was just an they accident or something. Method. Yes. I, I, I don't know what to do with these people. They're ridiculous. Yeah. Um, this is propaganda, by the way. This is purely yes. propaganda. There's nothing else to this. There's no correct uh, history. Uh, uh, There's no science. Hmm? Of the most intelligence-insulting variety, yes. It really is. Um, but it, it makes some of the people watching it feel good about themselves. So there's that. That's that's 90% of atheists. It is. No kidding. All right. I'm going to keep going. I recommend his books. They help free my mind from recluse. It's time we face facts. The universe is cold and uncaring, which implies that we're alone and it's scary. I can't deny that. But if you like it or not, it's still the truth. Says you! Deny gravity, but you'll still fall off the roof. What? I'm going to let it finish. Or no, let's just, yeah, okay, I think that is the end. Deny gravity. Okay, so basically, if we deny your atheist proposition about the universe and the assertions you just made, okay, it's a cold, uncaring universe, according to you, with evidence. I mean, I tend to agree with the proposition that the universe doesn't care, but God does, but, you know, whatever. Uh, what great insight do you gain, sir, out of this? The universe is cold and uncaring because I said so. Well, because Where do you have the audacity to compare it to gravity, which is a proof? I, that's the thing. That would be a great last line for a Christian poem. It's like, yeah, you can deny hell, you can de deny damnation, it's still going to be there whether you believe it or not. I don't understand what it means in the context of, of atheism. It's like, okay, I live a happy life believing in God, and then what happens? It's like, okay. And uh, he, the whole pan to Richard Dawkins here is just tragic. Okay, there's yeah. like 14 seconds. Let's see if there's like 14 seconds. And then we can just I think I'm just going to... Well, Probably just going to say subscribe, and I'm awesome. He survived a zombie holocaust. Good for you. That's your film. Okay. okay. Um, well, I saw boobies, so that's good. I always like the boobies. Oh, I, um, I that. It, it was in his, his zombie film. All right, enough of that. At least you picked a mercifully short one. Yes. I appreciate that. I, I, I really, it just stunned me coming out of the, he's a Dawkins cultist. Yeah. And, and by the way, you know, my friend Christopher, Christopher of Missing the Mark, you've talked to him, you know, our friend, uh, more or less. Um, he has a good one on joining the Dawkins cult. Maybe I'll put that in the low bar when we're done here. Oh, my God. Did you pick this out just because Richard Dawkins is in there because you know I have a particular thing about Dawkins? Well, so I, I just find it astounding that 10 years on, his, his garbage fast food philosophy is still, is still finding adherence, you know? I love that you call it fast food philosophy. I'm gonna have to steal that line. Um, it, 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 I'm gonna. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Richard Dawkins uh, is a moderate intelligence uh, zoologist. Okay, technically his his PhD is in something called ethology, but if you look into it, it's a subset of of, of animal zoology. He's not even like somebody interesting, like somebody like a molecular biologist, a geneticist somebody who studies microbial life, none of that. He yeah. just knows about big animals and heredity. And he's got this big elaborate theory called selfish gene, which, by the way, isn't scientific. By his own measures, he says it's not scientific. Yeah. 
Um, he went on to base uh, a create a theory called memetic theory, which is what the internet meme idea is based on. But otherwise, there's no science in it each or either. Anybody who ever tried to do replicable hard science with selfish gene failed. Nobody's tried in more than 10 years. Um, the man's a complete failure as a scientist. He's only a public figure. He doesn't describe, he, he misses also, he gets all sorts of things in evolution that current evolutionary biologists will tell you are wrong. And as a philosopher goes, you know, huh? If he's 40 years out of date. I mean, he hasn't been a research scientist uh, in 40 years. And even when he came up with selfish gene back in the 70s, it was it was provocative, but not hardly proven, you know, it really and, it, and, it, and it's nothing now. There's no science to it. Yeah. I, in fact, I did an interview with the Freedom from Atheism Foundation. It's a few videos back from here on the Escaping yeah. Atheism channel. And he says the same thing. And he wouldn't exactly call it pseudoscience, but he's like, nobody's studying that. Nobody, you know, it doesn't describe anything. Because it doesn't. It's just yeah. sort of this loosey-goosey, gross generalization. He proved nothing to you. And then he wants you to believe in a cold, uncaring universe and that nothing out there cares about you. You don't matter. Okay, so basically, you're basically a meat sack. You made out of meat and bone and jelly, and your thoughts and your experiences are just electrochemical effects. They're going to fizz out when your brain dies, and this is the liberating truth you want us to all know. But they're, they're, they, I do think that they coast by uh, on that kind of uh, uh, presumption that they are the ones who have the courage to face the, the cold, unfeeling universe Whereas we're just swathing ourselves in, in these comforting lies. And so that theirs is kind of a, a triumph of the head over the heart. Since you willingly believe something that's dismal and soul sapping, that must be a courageous, uh, a, a, a courageous intellectual stance, you know? Without ever bothering to ask, is what you're saying making any sense at all? Yes. And I, and I think it all goes down to this cartoon view of God that's this super duper creature that is watching and is going to throw lightning bolts at us. It's such a childish view of God. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's hard to know what to do about it. Or, or where this is going to come from. Ultimately, though, he's made it clear. And what I like about him is, is he believes in the old, cold, uncaring universe. So he at least understands at some level, atheism is an ideological position and a proposition. But without evidence, he's just... Yeah. Uh, I have an essay also that we've got coming up soon, uh, read by Eve, uh, uh, that was written by Eve Kinnainen that I read. That video will be out soon. Patrons, Patreon uh, supporters already have it. Uh, and she goes into the same thing where, okay, he, he presumably is a believer in so-called science. Um, he's not a science expert by any means. Um, but uh, Eve points out, as have others, all the things you have to have uh, uh, as, as a, the faith position to even believe in science. Yeah. You have to believe, for example, well, in the intelligibility of the universe. Yes. Uh, and that, it, that the intelligibility of the universe holds. Um, that cause and effect hold yes. uh, universally, uh, 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 that the laws of physics essentially are uniform and don't change, that the universe is uniform and doesn't change, or it only changes in predictable ways that we understand. Yes, so, it, by, by virtue of some meta law, yes. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's just for starters, right? She doesn't even get into the other faith assertions which uh, that, that come from these people who say they follow science, like this guy has massive faith, unjustified, by the way, massive faith in Richard Dawkins. He has <laughs> massive faith in any scientists who say things that he agrees with. Yes, yes, yes. That's what, that's what I always say is that the, the, the self-professed skeptics have total credulousness when it comes to any anti-Christian, anti-theistic claim. I, I also noticed something that you've pointed out to me that I hadn't noticed, uh, uh, but he, he did it. Um, and it is also another common atheist trick. The seems to me yes. argument. Yes. The seems to me argument. Well, it seems to me a lot of things. Seems to me God would have done X, Y, and Z. Well, yes. I'm glad it seems that way to you. And uh, if, if I were God, I would have done this. And, well, okay, you're not God. I keep struggling to find very simple ways to explain the God idea to people. Um, and then the one I keep getting down to is, mate, listen, listen, I'll, I'll talk like I'm a Kiwi too. Mate, won't you listen? 
I want you to listen here very carefully. Can't do it very well. Very yeah, carefully. Australian, yeah. Um, and, yeah, a little bit. Um, but uh, 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 um, shit. Now I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you were explaining atheism. I I was trying to get cute. Um, okay. Uh, I, I've completely lost my train of thought. Oh, okay. You say oh, something yeah. clever. <laughs> well, yes, uh, you're talking about science and and, and and the various statements of faith and and and, and he seems uh, to be argument. He believes whatever scientists are convincing to him. He's got nothing else to convince yes. him. Yes, that's, that's that's one of the things I've seen too. Whatever area of science you want to talk about, like Kyle Kalinsky was ranting about global warming. Um, I, I've heard other people rant about vaccines, about alternative medicine, medicine, etc. What's really clear whenever you see this is a name some scientists other than Richard Dawkins who you agree with and why you agree with them. Oh, and also by the way, why do you believe in peer-reviewed studies? And which one oh. in which journals do you follow that you find reliable versus not reliable? <laughs> I love. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to. I love that when when atheists in in their it's always this this kind of uh, uh, do I sound smart yet kind of gesture. Give me give me peer reviewed evidence. I demand evidence. Peer reviewed evidence. When was the last time you even fucking laid your hand on an academic journal? That oh, is, no that kidding. Is such a joke. I demand peer-reviewed evidence, and they say, "Oh, peer-reviewed evidence for God? Yeah, there's there's lots of uh, peer-reviewed uh, philosophical evidence in these philosophical journals. No, that, that's not good enough for me. They keep they keep narrowing uh, uh, the evidence they'll accept until they can successfully evade uh, anything you'll give them. You know, a, a study recently, well, it was a survey, but still, of working scientists in the UK showed that the vast majority of them think Richard Dawkins does more harm than good. There's yes. peer-reviewed data for you, sir. Yes, yes, yes. What are you doing with that? I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand how it, how it's. If you consider science a cause, and I have problems with that in and of itself, but yep. if you consider science a cause, I don't see how it's good for the cause of science to teach people that is antithetical and hostile to everything they hold dear. That's right. And furthermore, you know, there's a lot of science. I mean, not only is there the history of, of, of very successful scientific contributions by religious people, many of whom use their religious views as inspiration for their work, yes. um, but there's also copious science showing that uh, people who are religious, uh, at least as measured by weekly church attendance or religious service attendance, they live longer, they have more kids, their kids do better in school, they're less likely to go to jail, they're less likely to have drug problems, they have more stable marriages, they have more stable careers. They live longer, they're more psychologically stable. <laughs> this is people who go to church. Now, we're not holding you up as an example of all this. But <laughs> no, no, but that's, that's real science there. And, and where's the scientific evidence that Christians or any religion regularly gets in the way of science more than, let's say, secular political ideologies do. Yeah. Or corporate yeah. interests, you know, fun monetary interests, whatever. Why is religion the one that's getting in the way only? Yeah. I, I, every time every time they say, oh, well, we'd be exploring the galaxy by now, just hold their feet to the fire. What evidence do you have to, to, to assert such a thing? That people's privately – and notice, I, I, I always – I've said this to you before – there is a coi there is a totalitarianism coiled in that sentiment that people's privately held religious beliefs are somehow inhibiting technological scientific progress. That's well, right. When, when they actually get their hands on the reins of power, don't you think that people's privately held religious beliefs are going to be the first things that get bulldozed in the name of eminent domain? I mean, if if, if we're what's standing in between us exploring the galaxy of course our beliefs are, you know it's it, they're going to have an obligation to crush religious belief and through any necessary well exactly and uh really i don't and, and and what is the evidence sir that your atheism is going to make anybody smarter even you mm. I, I, well i don't know I, it's, it's hard to listen to a guy like this and go, mate, really, do you know anybody who's religious who's actually studied it? As yeah. opposed to some buddy with a Bible you have, or that's my favorite phrase, your buddy with a Bible. Well, that's because they're the biggest idiot Christians out there. But 
this there's a totalitarianism to this too because they like to say about talk about privately held religious beliefs already assuming that we're obligated to keep those private too there's the totalitarianism of that too that we're obligated yeah. to keep them private that we've you know just by expressing them aloud and and where that actually goes what i find i've gone on this before but i'll say it again what a guy like this wants, whether he admits it or not, even to himself, is he wants the ability to say that's scientific and therefore okay, and that's religious and therefore not. Yes. You yeah. or the people you like will get to make that determination for everybody else. Yes. He's oh. a scientist. You know, this guy's a scientist. This guy's position is scientific, so we'll accept it. And this guy's position is religious, so we will not. By, yeah. what, by what human rights principle or logical principle did you arrive at that? Yeah. Um, or, 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 or he'll deem that a certain conviction is religious in nature and, and therefore that has no place in the, in the, in the, in the entire sphere of debate. Like it, you know, if, if a person is against abortion, he can, oh, well that, that is a religious belief, even though it's really not, but it's like, oh, well, that's a religious belief. Therefore it is not open to the whole kind of democratic theater of views, you know? That's right. There's Christians who have reservations about gay issues. Okay. Yeah. Um, everybody's got issue got 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 issues with uh, sexuality. Everybody does. Atheists do as well. You can always push them on it. In fact, Jonathan Haidt, one of the best public intellectuals, I still find worth listening to. I don't know if he's an atheist or not. I've got my suspicions. He's a doubter of the atheist proposition, but whatever. John Haidt did an interesting experiment that's really worth because he studies moral psychology. I don't know if you know that's his background or not. Um, but one of the studies he did um, was he, you know, he, he surveyed a bunch of people, religious, non, atheist, not religious, etc., and he poses them at least he poses them very small questions. One of them is nearly universal, and it's so funny. Um, uh, I, I, I'll paraphrase it, but I'll get it pretty close. Like John and Sally are brother and sister, and they're both in their mid twenties, maybe a year or two apart. Um, and one day, you know, they're they're in their mid twenties as adults. Uh, they decide uh, they really love each other as brother and sister, and so to see if they can, they're going to experiment and see if they can make their love stronger by having sex with each other. And so uh, this brother and sister do that, and they use protection, multiple varieties. They decide to do it only once, and they're never going to do it again. Um, no, no, nothing bad happened. No unwanted pregnancies, no diseases, nothing. Um, and it was all, you know, about a year ago, and they say they're not going to do it again, but they want everybody to know they did enjoy it. Now, is that wrong? And, you know, nearly 100% said, yes, it was wrong, but nobody except the religious people could give a coherent explanation yeah. as to why. None. Even some of the non-religious people tried pulling out the Bible or something else, right, or, or invoking religious values. Um, and what that points to, Hate pointed this out and others too, is that there is an innate moral psychology from humans that can't be easily parsed or, uh, out. Yeah, uh, religious people will say, well, that's because the gospel's written on men's hearts or because God has written right and wrong into us, and we already know it. Um, scientists like Sam Harris and them have never been able to come up with a real explanation for that. They don't have one. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's funny, we all come to, those of us who do come to believe in God, um, we all have different reasons, right? Moral questions were not my main questions, but I've talked to other people who've told me, yeah, they gave up atheism because of the moral questions. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I stay away from the moral argument myself, yeah. but uh, Yeah, it's not my favorite, but I have to notice it. Like, I do notice, and I say this one over and over again, every time you appeal to morality, you are appealing to something outside of human. Exactly. Individual, you just are. You're, you're de appealing to something. I mean, I've had a few people tell me, I'm an atheist, I'm, I have morals, I just go by basic decency. And that's that's the sentimental response, yes. What decency? Define decency, and yeah. how is it? You know, and many of them will talk about empathy, and empathy is a terrible. Yeah, or or, or they'll, they'll say they'll say why they they feel it's good, it's it's nice to be nice. And again, I hate again, it's just so insipid and sentimental. Oh, it's nice to be nice. I act good because it makes me feel. But you're still not defining what the good is. You know, no, you're really not. 
Um, and, and I also find that atheists are big on calling themselves free thinkers. You know, they'll entertain any possibility. Okay, should we get into And then I just ask, and this is completely, by the way, not a sarcastic question. Should the rest of society tolerate atheists at all? Yeah. Should atheists have any, should they have the right to vote? Should they have the right to hold government office? Um, I'm thinking maybe they shouldn't because they hate the rest of us so much. As a free thinker, should I not propose, can I not propose that atheists are never to be trusted and should be given no civil rights? Yeah. Why not? Hey, well, Give me a rational reason. We have the numerical advantage, yeah. We do have the numerical advantage. In fact, why don't we just kill all the atheists? <laughs> watch, they'll take, watch. They'll, take, they'll, they'll, they'll try and take down the video because I propose that. I'm just proposing it as a thought experiment. Why don't the Christians get together and just we kill the atheists? We are free thinkers. We are free thinkers. We're free thinkers, so let's consider... We are casting off the shackles of, uh, of, of your little... Uh, of your primitive morality. Yes. We're casting off the shackles of the primitive morality. We're just asking, should we kill all unbelievers? <laughs> um, and if oh, we did... Good. <laughs> we if, wait, wait a minute. If we did kill all unbelievers, why would that be wrong? Uh, we, try to tell me why that would be wrong without invoking Christian morality. Okay, so we've gotten into incest. <laughs> We've got an incest, mass murder. You know, religious people are dangerous. We are dangerous. We're talking about we're talking about killing homos. We're talking about killing atheists. No, I'm talking about the logical here. We don't want to hurt anybody. For God's yeah. sake, Christian values are the ones that says don't hurt people just because you disagree with them. But really, if we're casting these thought experiments, where are the great atheist contributions of any sort? And please don't say Richard Dawkins. Oh my yes. God. Dear God, I feel so sorry for Richard Dawkins. Uh, my friend Chris at, at Missing the Mark has said it, and I think he's right. Richard Dawkins is somebody with a very slightly above average IQ th who's been told his whole life that he's a genius. Yes, yes. <laughs> and his followers are even worse. Yeah. Um, now, some are going to say it's irrelevant because Dawkins is irrelevant, but this is standard atheist pap. This is standard atheist narrative. Even the ones who don't like Dawkins talk this way. Yeah, And one of the things I want all religious people to do are just open-minded, true free thinkers to go question those, those assertions, question his beliefs, yeah. question his history, question his science, be skeptical of what he says, because there's a okay. lot to be skeptical of there. You will often find uh, articles, particularly coming out of the British press, like the, the Guardian or whatnot, and they say, oh, well, well, Dawkins is old hat. There's a new wave of atheists. But the, the, the criticisms of Dawkins are almost always ones of style. That, that he's an asshole, like that he that he's haughty or whatever. No, I mean, yeah, it, Dawkins' style is, is offensive enough, but there's a whole lot to object to with the substance of Dawkins. And I think whenever, whenever like the Guardian or something has an article that says, "Oh, well, there's a new wave of atheism, and we're casting aside Richard Dawkins," they're still just assuming atheism correct. Uh -huh. They're not. Their their new their new form of atheism simply assumes atheism. No, that's not that's not any improvement. Uh, uh, at least at least Richard Dawkins made an effort to try to provide some uh, uh, warrant for his claim. I think I think a lot of uh, uh, even more recent atheists don't even bother doing that. No, they actually don't. They just go on to their assumed conclusions of everything they say is correct, and it's yeah. not. And what's creepy is, too, they've taken over a lot of search engine results. You can see some of its SEO manipulation, just like it's creepy that now many people have been led to believe that Buddhism is an atheist faith, which is pure Chinese government propaganda, by the way. Um, real Buddhists are theists, most of them. Um, but, uh, you know, all, and we talked about that with the Freedom from Atheism guy, too. Um, in the end, I think, though, what may bug me most about this guy in particular, this Kiwi, and, and, and so many like him, is the, the, the idea that he's coming to save us from something. Yes. And that he's the brave truth teller. You know, Christians being the most inherently nonviolent major world religion, because it is, these guys have known for more than a decade that they can just shit on Christians and Christians won't do anything to them. Yeah. And, and, you know, I guess that's fine, but then they keep talking like they're the brave ones. Yes. Like they're doing something courageous. What, where's the courage in that? I mean, I, but, but here's the thing. Now it's 2017. We've had over a decade of this crap. I'm even an ex-atheist. Ex and, 
this is going to seem provocative, but I'm going to say it. I actually do think to a certain extent, I don't, I don't advocate violence, but to a certain extent, we should start making atheism. Uh, let's go ahead and make the atheist have to be brave. Uh, atheists should start losing friends and should start losing business opportunities. And I would include this asshole. Uh, I wouldn't be, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be one of those William Lane Craig guys and say, oh, I just wanna be your friend so you'll understand me. No, you're an asshole, I don't like you. Get away from me and get away from my kid. Um, sounds harsh, but at some level, if you don't push back at these people, they will just keep getting worse and worse. I mean, I still hear regularly from people who tell me I'm doing something wrong to educate my child. Yes. Religiously. And, and they appear to feel that they have the, the right to do that. And, and, and that's, that's the stuff over which revolutions are fought. Mm. <laughs> that's the stuff over which, I mean, it's like Chris Lansdowne said it the other day. Those are fighting words. You're going to tell me how I can educate my kid, really? Yeah. My kid is your property? And yeah. you are the arbiter of right and wrong, rationality and not rationality. You're the... The, the living embodiment of science and, and decency. Yeah. And that's the thing, you can, and I, I, not to belabor this point, but you can see the, the germ of totalitarianism right there in the thing that, that somehow religion is standing in the way of, of technological progress. That's the same thing that motivated the USSR and Mao and, and, and all these other you know, murderous atheist regimes. It is, it is. And, and in a real sense, if you look at anti-religious propaganda against Jews um, and against, uh, you know, propaganda that the Chinese used against Buddhists, actually. Again, Buddhism is not an atheist faith, but the Ch Chinese government made it one and killed a lot of Buddhists and a lot of monks and a lot of others um, just to put in place their atheist version of Buddhism. Um, so there was a lot of persecution of religious theists, spiritual Buddhists. By the way, that's what the whole Dalai Lama thing is. He's a Buddhist and he believes in the spiritual. Um, these, uh, what, what do we do with the fact that atheists refuse to acknowledge that they have taken in a position, an ideological position, one which informs everything about their worldview, and they won't take that seriously. They just walk around asserting that they're right about everything. Hmm. They, I, I, I wish I knew what to do other than just push back and get rude with them because nothing else seems to get through to them. Or respond to their videos. Or respond to their videos, which uh -huh. is what we're here to do. And I think we've responded to this guy. The only problem, he said nothing of substance. No. So I don't know what else to say with him. I will say I'm working on a response video now to uh, Aaron Clary, a.k.a. Captain Capitalism. Uh, look for that sometime this week. Uh, he's a libertarian, and I do like, you know, I was a little hard last week, I admit it. Uh, I do like some atheists better than others, and the libertarian yeah. atheists are a little easier to get along with. Um, but he's still, like, doing this whole... Uh, religion, there's no evidence, there's no proof. The good Christians admit they just believe it without having any reason yeah. to believe it. So I'm going to send him a response, but I promise this one will be an unusually nice one. Um, yeah. I can tell he's trying, especially because he did the one thing that not enough modern atheists do. He says he, he says and names some of his Christian friends, and it's clear he means he thinks of them, them as friends. Yeah. There's a start. Those are the yeah. atheists I remember from 20 years ago. Uh, there's not enough of them left now. Not, not, not enough. Where, where you know, I, my mom gave me a little kids' illustrated Bible when I was eight, and then, then I became an, an atheist when I turned eleven, and now I know everything there is to know about Christianity. Oh my God, yeah. So all, the, all those other people, like I grew up, and my parents abused me because they were in a, a wacky fringe cult, and so now that's everybody else's fault. Yeah. And 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 they never look at ideological atheists and people who abuse their kids who aren't religious, but who are into some wacky political philosophy. Like a lot of feminists were abused by their feminist mothers, just for example. Um, and that's just one example. There's a lot of uh, uh, Madeline Murray O'Hare, the founder of American atheism. You know about how she disowned her son, right? Yes, 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 yes. A horrible, horrible, horrible woman. So the thing is, is that when people talk, when these atheists talk about science, um, it's the, it's probably my number one bugaboo. If you're going to talk about religious misbehavior, if you want to have a scientific uh, view of religious people behaving badly, you have to have a basis of comparison. Yeah. 
And it, rem it remains that if you compare against secular institutions and secular ideologies, uh, atheism doesn't look better than religion at all. Yeah. In fact, it starts looking worse yes. along many plottable axes. Okay, well, that's all I have to say about this video or any of this this week. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, no, I think that that's, that's enough uh, blabbering for this week. That's fine. If we can keep these short, we'll keep them short. So there you go. A uh, Kiwi filmmaker about is into zombies gave us some, he threw down some mad rhymes <laughs> and, and, and schooled and us school and some science and schooled us on the truth with a capital T. Yes. He's going to make atheism great again with that. Buy, buy, the, buy the hat from his merch store. Yes. Oh Lord! Oh, by by the way, he has he has all us. Uh, I probably shouldn't even say this, but he has all all swag. He has like T-shirts and stuff printed up for this for this gravity thing. You know, I maybe uh, we, we we probably ought to start selling T-shirts and stuff ourselves because I'm yeah. sick about I'm sick of I'm sick of picking apart atheists for free. We need to make some cash. But okay, <laughs> um, like I said, I I do have a video for for uh, responding to Aaron Car Clary Capital Capitalism coming up this week. Also got a video from Eve Kanainen coming up this week. You got anything good coming up this week? Uh, no, I just uh, I just uh, finally uh, uh, surpassed 500 subscribers uh, this you past week. You suck. Why are you doing better than us? You suck. Uh, <laughs> That's all right. We're, we're closing on 350, and we're yeah. gaining fast. So um, nothing can stop the signal. All right. So we said all we're going to say. See, us again, see you again next week, and watch both our channels. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit us on Patreon, and God bless.